The other man does not do what Jesus says. It's very simple. He hears the word of Christ, just like the first man, but he doesn't apply it in his own life. This is echoed in the parable of the seed and the sower. Jesus talks about a sower sowing seed, and there's different kinds of soil that the seed lands on. The first man, the obedient man, was good soil. The word took root in his heart. It bore fruit in his life. He was receptive and willing to hear the gospel and willing to hear the word of God. But the fool has a hard heart. The seed doesn't penetrate. There's, there's rocks in the soil. It's shallow. Maybe there's a quick joy, but it dies very quickly as well. John MacArthur makes some great comments about that parable when he says, there's nothing wrong with the seed. There's nothing wrong. The, the variable is the soil. The soil is the problem. So when somebody's not being changed by the Word of God, it doesn't mean that we need to change this. It means we need to pray that God will change this. The seed's perfect. It's pure. There's no need to alter it. You can't make it any better than it is. The fool doesn't receive the words of Jesus. I heard a message one time that illustrates this. It was about King Saul in the Old Testament. I don't remember the preacher, so forgive me for not being able to quote his name. But he talked about King Saul, and he said that uh, in the Old Testament, you see a lot of instability in the life of Saul. And if Saul lived in our day, we would try to diagnose him and treat him according to man's standards. We would say that King Saul suffered from anxiety. He was bipolar. He was paranoid. He was a schizophrenic. He had all these mental health conditions. We... We would tell him to uh, medicate or meditate or change your diet, start stretching and do yoga and, and, you know, experience transcendental meditation. All of this would fail to address the real problem, which was disobedience. That's why Saul experienced instability. He heard the word of God, but he did not do what God said repeatedly. He was the fool in Matthew 7 here. It wasn't that he didn't know, and it wasn't that he didn't have an opportunity to understand God's will. He refused to do it. So Saul had good looks, a physical stature. He was a head taller than everyone else. He had military and monetary power as well as success and opportunity, and yet he never had rest because he was disobedient to the Word of God. As long as he was disobedient, he would never experience peace. This is what Jesus is telling us in Matthew 7. The fool who hears the Word but doesn't do it experiences destruction. The end result is the proof as well on this side. His house falls and it's a great fall it's catastrophic he seems to be doing well when life is smooth but when hardship comes in everything falls apart because the foundation of sand won't stand it won't endure and and what is that sand foundation it's disobedience it's anything besides submitting to the words of jesus insert any religion any philosophy any lifestyle in in place of God's word, and it will fail. It won't last us through a storm. When I was in elementary school, um, Brielle's here, we were in the Science Olympia. Do you remember that? We did rocks and minerals first place in the Science Olympia. Brielle and I were on a team, okay? Still proud to this day. One of the the challenges was called write it, do it. And there would be uh, one, one participant facing this way, looking at a little Lego building. And the other person had their back to them with a pile of Lego bricks. And this person would give instructions on how to build it. You know, take the gray one with six dots and put it on the left side. And they would give verbal instructions. And then the person on this side had to hear and had to apply it and build the house. (laughs) Some of the houses turned out really bad because we found out fifth graders don't pay good attention to every word that's spoken. But what happened was when time was up and everybody turned around, you could see how well you listened. Because it either turned out like the model or it looked like something very different. That's what Jesus is saying here. Hearing is not the problem, it's doing. It's paying attention and choosing to apply what he says. So 
So in a few short verses, we've established here that there's radical stability to the obedient believer 